What's up YouTube, Dal here from Zephyr Wargames and today because you guys enjoyed the previous video about when to use hand traps I thought I would bring to you a list of board breakers and then again we'll go through the main meta decks in my opinion for the top six decks as well you can also kind of apply the cards I'm going to show you in regards to other decks as well so with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. If this video gets above 50 likes in the first 24 hours, I will bring you a side deck version as well, so you now know what you'd be using in a side deck that could be as effective against as many of these as possible. So we're going to be doing this a little bit differently, so rather than telling you exactly what to hit, I will do that as well, but the visualization will be uh, displayed in memes as to whether it is good or meh. Or maybe it is, oh, that's bad. And the last one is, be careful, you must. So these are all about ones that I'll tell you what they might try and negate it with, which is why you need to bait it out first uh, and everything else like that. So we'll start off with the main meta deck and we'll start off with what I would personally say is the most staple card for side decks right now. And that is evenly matched. Now, whether you're putting this in the side deck, whether you're putting it in the main deck, it is just some, one of the best board breaking cards in the entire game. Yes, you do sacrifice your battle phase, but if you're able to sacrifice your battle phase and completely rip away every bit of advantage your opponent had, they are then starting from scratch while you are, have the ability to build your own board. It's very rare that a deck going first will also have an evenly matched, so you have a big advantage. And sometimes if you evenly match your opponent and then set up your own board, uh, they might scoop it then and there so let's look at this against cash tiras why is it so good well quite simply cash tiras have no form of negation unless they are playing the adventure package or unless they have adapted their plays to specifically get into bat on the floor now obviously this particular type of cash tiras might change a little bit more purely for the fact that we know nibiru is running around we know that evenly match is running around we know book of eclipse is running around uh, a lot of players are considering Forbidden Lance, but Forbidden Lance won't actually help you against Evenly Matched because, as I've said before, Evenly Matched affects the player, not the monsters. So, for example, when we get a little bit further on down the line in regards to Trap Tricks, even though the Trap Trick cards say they are unaffected by Trap Effects, Evenly Matched makes the player banish cards face down. It's not a Trap card that is directly affecting the monster. So it's a very important note. So like if you're playing Trap Tricks, don't think that if you've got like four Trap Tricks monsters on the board that are unaffected by Trap, you just banish everything else. That's not the case. Um, and that's kind of why if they give you a token, for example, you are absolutely screwed because tokens can't be banished face down, which means you lose your entire board except said token. So, of course, as you can possibly imagine, up against Cash Tears, it will absolutely destroy their board. There is no way that they can kind of play around it unless they have adapted their play specifically in order to kind of counteract something like that. Even then, if they have created a Baron or if they have created a... Um, an adventure package and using the griffin rider you can still bait that out very easily when you combine evenly match with any other kind of form of negate whether that be dark ruler no more whether that be book of eclipse you know th this will absolutely destroy their board okay let's move on to branded now i mean i'm, I'm going to kind of bullet point these because evenly match is just that good against all of these lists that's why i feel that it is the best board breaking card to be in the main or the side deck the fact that it deals with front row and back row is just absolutely insane and i feel the only deck that will at least be able to survive some form of benefit from uh, evenly matched is trap tricks and i'll explain that when we get to them so the second deck being branded, well, again, pretty much like Cash Tears, uh, it doesn't really produce a negate. Yes, it can produce um, a Dragoon, but even then again, you bait that Dragoon out with something just as strong or just as damaging, they're going to lose their entire board. They lose a lot of advantage. Yes, they might hold back something like a Branded in Red. The issue with Branded in comparison to Cash Tears is, unless Cash Tears are playing the Ibli Lock to give you a monster... Um, the branded one can also play the gimmick puppet nightmare and give you that so as long if you control monster you can't evenly match them which does become a bit more tricky which is another way that these decks are trying to play around it moving quite swiftly on to sword soul again very relatively straightforward on this one they can more naturally produce an omni negate in the form of baron but you bait that out and then evenly them there's not a single card that they might want to keep like nine out of ten if you evenly them and they've already used baron 
they will probably keep the Chi Zhao because the Chi Zhao will then give them ability to banish a card and then negate a card. They won't keep a blackout. That's definitely going. They won't keep the Monk on the board. That's 100% going. So there's ways that you can pick their board apart with that evenly matched. Moving on to Labyrinths. Again, I think this is one of the strongest cards against Labyrinths. The pure fact is that even if they wanted to... So like when you consider something like Lightning Storm and Harpy's Feather Duster... Um, some of the decks like Labyrinths and Trap Tricks can either protect their back row from being destroyed or can adapt it a little bit accordingly and chain all of their cards to special summon their monsters out. In the form of Labyrinths, even if they do chain all of their cards, the only difference is they'll be making sure they go to the graveyard so they can use their graveyard effects, but then everything else they bring onto the board will start to get banished. Now, Labyrinths can play around it a little bit more because of that ability of something like Big Welcome Labyrinth will allow them to activate the Welcome Labyrinth, bring a monster to the board, bounce a card back to their hand, so they're maintaining a bit more advantage, but it still forces them to do all of that and then leaves their board wide open so that you can then continue to build your, your board. Um, if your board loses to a single interruption, for example, that one card they've left in the form of like an Imperm or um, anything else, then it can be a little bit more damaging. Also, keep in mind as well that the big thing with Labyrinths is because the Lady Labyrinth just has to have a normal trap card be activated that turn, she can summon herself down at any point. So in theory, if they were to bounce the Lady Labyrinth to the hand and maintain a set normal trap card, they could resolve in main phase two to summon out, or even in the end phase to be fair, summon out the Lady Labyrinth, activate the Imperm, let's say they've kept that to negate one of your cards, that will then trigger Lady Labyrinth to give them another trap card. So they've been able to maintain a bit of advantage which is exactly the same as Trap Tricks. So with Trap Tricks, pretty much the same. If you evenly match them, I would not be surprised if they keep Sarah on the board because Sarah will trigger when a normal trap card is activated. So in theory, to activate evenly matched, Sarah would trigger because a normal trap card has been activated. That would then summon out a Mamello or a Pudica from the deck, more so a Mamello. Mamello will mandatory trigger and that will then allow Sarah to reset the... Uh, Holotier. So then they could activate Holotier, summon itself out, or hold it back, whatever it needs to. So they'll still be able to get free card advantage or an additional two cards back onto the board, but it does, again, evenly match just outs a Reflesia, it, it outs a um, possibility of Floodgate Trap Hole, Grave Diggers, anything they might have set along their back row. So, and it bypasses the Arachna Campa protection effect as well. Moving on to Sprites again, quite like the rest of the decks, they can produce natural negation to this in the form of um the totally awesome but again it's very specific for them to get to totally awesome but when they do all you need to do is bait it out so like a book of eclipse a dark hole anything like that and then straight away they go okay i guess i'm gonna get an even lead um they do have other ways in the form of carrot as well carrot can negate that so they can set up two negates to deal with it so they've probably got the most consistent and easiest way of dealing with it without considering like an, i can't imagine that all labyrinths and all trap tricks are going to be main decking um main deck in the judgment so that's where the side deck comes in that's where evening match might become a little bit more ineffective against something like a labyrinth and a track tricks but you never know moving on to the second card now this this card technically isn't a board breaker but i'm going to count it as a board breaker because again quite like evening match this comboed off with something else can destroy a lot of the decks so Book of Eclipse. So Book of Eclipse against Cash Tears, I'm not even going to spend much time on that one. It is insane. The, the, the thing, the reason I rate Book of Eclipse, and you can, of course, use Book of Moon, you can, of course, consider the Book of Lunar Eclipse, but the reason Eclipse is so good is, yes, the drawback of it being stopped by Ash is very painful. However, if they don't have an Ash or they've already used an Ash, Book of Eclipse to flip everything face down, non-target, will deal with those Omni Negates. You could activate that and they have to chain their Omni Negate to deal with it. So very, very damaging. Flipping everything face down on the cash tier board. Activating it in the draw phase as well before they can even get the Fenrir from the deck means you've got one less monster you need to try and beat over, which can be very, very important. So it does give you a very nice range in order to kind of deal with it and move everything else a little bit further forward. Quite like um, evenly matched against Branded. These are one of these ones where be careful you must kind of feel in because again they've got the omni negate but you can stop them early they can still fuse with face down monsters but it kind of stalls their plans out a little bit so very very good to kind of deal with that front row a lot of the more powerful cards apart from track tricks and of course labyrinths are going to be dealing with front row Sword Soul, again, pretty much straightforward on this one. The only difference with this is if they have Monk on the board, they will still have access to their Blackout. Um, so they don't lose everything, 
but they are losing a Chi Zhao and they would lose a, for example, let's say they don't go for Baron, they go for the level 10 uh, Sovereign that lets them burn for 1200. They will burn you for 1200, but then they won't be able to basically banish one of your special monsters and everything else like that. Moving on to Labyrinths, it's not the greatest because they can hold back their summon of the Lady Labyrinth. Um, they can also hold back the summon of the Ariana. They've got big welcomes that they can start flooding the board of. This is a very late and delayed kind of card to use. So personally, it's one of them ones where if you're maining it, I would be taking it out against Labyrinths. And if you're siding it in, I wouldn't put it in against Labyrinths. Trap tricks. Trap tricks, it can be kind of cool against. Um, so if you're going first, for example, and you set the Book of Eclipse, yes, you'll give them some draws in the end phase. But considering the majority of cards in a trap tricks deck are going to be trap cards, you don't really worry too much about that if you can finish the game off the next turn. If you can't, then you don't activate it. But the idea behind this is, for example, if they go normal summon um, Mantis, activate the effect to search. If you chain Book of Eclipse or Book of Lunar Eclipse or even Book of Moon and flip it face down, Unless they've already opened up an Arachna Camper, they're not going to be able to chain to it. They will no longer control a Tractrix monster, which means they cannot then go into um, a Serra. They can't trigger a Parallel Xyz. Even if they did have a Shade Brigadine, the best thing they could do is activate Shade Brigadine, turn that into a Link Spider if they are playing it, and then go into a Parallel Xyz play. On top of that as well, being able to activate Book of Eclipse during the draw phase when they've already set up their board can deal with Rafflesia quite nicely, which means you're able to kind of push plays further forward. That route as well. It can be a little bit tricky, a little bit hit and go. You obviously don't want to do it on the Pudica because then Pudica will still resolve, searching out the field spell, activate the field spell, giving them additional normal summon. That can then turn into, you know, Mantis. Mantis search out right in the campfire. They've got Sarah. They've got a Trap Trick Monster Effect that can activate. They've got a Trap Card that can be activated and they'll keep going and going and going. There's not really anything on the Tractrix board that will stop you doing it. Sarah will still remain face up, so they will be able to net value off of the back of that as well. But it's something to kind of keep in mind. I still feel it's more effective against Tractrix than it is against Labyrinths because Labyrinths don't really need their monsters to go into the extra deck. And Lady Labyrinth is still a very decent defender, so it's not the end of the world. It's something you could consider keeping in or siding in for Tractrix. It really depends on how you're going to see it through, but you do need to make sure you win the game after that point. Against sprites, again, I think it's kind of, it's okay. Um, it can be pretty good on their first normal summon. So, for example, if they go normal summon Nimble Beaver and you activate Book of Eclipse and you flip that face down with the monster that comes from the deck face down, they now no longer control level two, so they can't keep spawning the sprite monsters. So that can be very, very damaging. You can Book of Eclipse their gigantic sprite when they summon that out as well, and you're basically stopping them being able to special from the deck. You're stopping them being able to go into Zeus. You're also stopping them being able to get into um, their link monsters as well. Now, obviously, if they do get to their link monsters, you're not going to be able to flip them face down, but it is a nice deterrent. Again, like I said, with Zeus, it's pretty much any deck that can run Zeus. Even if your opponent just attacks directly, I don't know why you'd let them to, but you could Book of Eclipse that monster, and then they're not getting Zeus on the board, which means they're not going to clear your board off. So, for example, if they went, um, let's say they went like Dark Roller no more or something, turned off your cash board, and then went to an XYZ, and then were trying to attack old school Borbo style directly or something like that, um, then in main phase two or end of battle phase, you activate Book of Eclipse, you flip everything face down, and then they're never going to Zeus anyway. So Book of, Luna, Book of Eclipse, I personally feel is the better one. You do run that risk of getting Ash Blossomed, but the only deck that I say it is very bad against is Labyrinths. Everything else is kind of like, yeah, cool, okay, it's good. It's worth putting in the side deck. So it's one of the ones that, again, when you're building the side deck, when you're building the main deck, you could arguably put it at three. Moving on to the next one. Now, the next one is just going to be general board removal. So I'm going to talk about Dark Hole. It's going to be the main one because I feel over all of them, there is more utility for Dark Hole, and I'll explain that as we go. You can also consider Harpy's Feather Duster in this, Raigeki, and of course, uh, Lightning Storm as well. So against Cash Tira's Dark Hole, how good is it? Well, it's okay. It's not bad at all. The only issue is it will keep the Shangri-La on the board. So if they are locking out your zones, your zones will still remain locked, and it will still... Um, they will still have a 3k defender in Shangri-La on the board, but they won't have a Rise Heart, which is a Macro Cosmo, and they won't have a Fenrir that can become a Banish on you as well. Keep in mind that the reason you'd go with Dark Hole in that scenario is in case you get Iblead, because if you get Iblead, you can't Lightning Storm. You could still ride Geki, but again, it still won't have the best outcome. Like If you want to get rid of the Iblead without having to play a Link Garibo, then something like a Dark Hole will do the job. Duster... Um, against 
Cash Tiers is, is pretty irrelevant at the moment. Like if even if they are starting to place like main in Lancers or anything like that, it's not going to end their board. It's not going to end their turn or anything like that. Moving on to Branded, um, even Raigeki, Lightning Storm, Dark Hole, the biggest issue with those is if you hit their Mirror Jade, as long as they remember to trigger it, their Mirror Jade is going to nuke your board during the end phase. So you're kind of like, it's a tit for tat kind of thing. If you're not going to guarantee the OTK off of the back of that Dark Hole, you're not going to be able to get there. Not to mention as well, Dragoon cannot be destroyed, so Dragoon will still stay there. Uh, Lightning Storm's not going to be the most effective because the, the most experienced players are going to be putting their monsters in defense mode, so they play around Lightning Storm straight away especially in a cash board and maybe a, a cash board, possibly a sword soul board. Uh, but I think their defense is pretty weak and a branded board. Like their back row isn't that bad. Like if you're going to use a lightning storm just to, to deal with one branded in red, they could in fear if they wanted to still chain that branded in red and go a little bit further. So if not the end all be all, if that happens, it's a little bit more damage against cash tiers because you'll take out their field spell. You'll take out their birth if they've got that and you'll take out their trap card, but they'll all get banished anyway under right heart and then they'll be able to sign of like recycle them a little bit later on down the line so it's good against branded it's good against cash but again it depends on which one you want to go to the dark hole can be good in the branding matchup because it will get rid of that nightmare the issue is if you're doing that uh you're not going to be able to be spawning the board with much more it's going to be very difficult to play around the nightmare lock but you can't always guarantee that that's going to happen so that's again where you might want to consider raigeki is in the fact that Going second, Raigeki is going to be better if you don't get locked. If you do get locked, Dark Hole is going to be better. Sword Soul, they're not going to lock you. So Lightning Storm's probably a little bit more effective. Raigeki is a little bit more effective. But it's one of the ones where when you're put, building your extra deck together or building your side deck together or even your main deck and you're like, okay, what one do I choose? Do I choose Dust or do I choose Lightning Storm, Raigeki or Dark Hole? Dark Hole just hits the majority of more decks. Saying that, when you move on to Labyrinths, your better one would be Lightning Storm. And the reason it's a little bit better in Labyrinths than in Trap Tricks, which I'll like talk to you about in a minute, is they can't always out and out protect their back row. So yes, they can protect it with some of their cards and they can protect it if they want to play Lord of Heavenly Prison. In this scenario, I wouldn't be putting Dark Hole in for them. I wouldn't be putting in Raigekis. I wouldn't be putting in Lightning Storms because they can hold all that stuff back and Lightning Storm would be ineffective. Like, you can activate Lightning Storm, it's good. It will blow out their back row if they're not protecting it. So Lightning Storm is probably your ideal one with Harpy's Feather Duster. The issue comes is that they can still activate trap cards. They can still net advantage off of the back of it because they can activate a trap card, bounce the monster back to the hand, let their back row get nuked out, and then they can bring out the Lady Labyrinth. The issue is they won't have any back row to trigger the Lady Labyrinth to set another just trap card. So Lightning Storm is probably your ideal one of that. But again, you're taking that balanced sacrifice like maybe you go two dark hole two lightning storm depends if you're playing frost or not trap tricks i feel trap tricks are probably the most immune to something like this lightning storm won't affect their back row as much if they play the arachna camper and leave the arachna camp on the board which chances are nine out of ten i would probably do that if i was playing and i was going second i'd be a little bit cautious of harpy's feather duster going second and a little bit more cautious of lightning storm so i'd probably try to leave an arachna camper on the board so that my back row couldn't be destroyed once per turn meaning that you have to open up lightning storm and a duster to deal with the back row so in theory, if you activate a Dark Hole or a Regeki, you are training Rafflesia for, for a Dark Hole or a Regeki. So again, that's kind of where they're less effective. It's not something that I'd definitely... Like, I forgot them in my side deck and I'm up against Trap Trick. I'm not going to go, okay, instantly free Dark Hole in. I'm probably going to consider, you know what, 9 to that 10, they're probably going to get a Rafflesia on the board. Either way, they've got protection. It's less effective. That is why, personally, Evenly Match is the first one that goes in. No doubt about it. Uh, onto Sprite, Sprite actually have annoying back row and annoying front row. So they'll have like smashes, they've got double cross, they've also got um, starter as well if they keep that. So they do have ways to deal with it. They have ways to negate dark holes, right? Gekis, lightning storms, you name it. And the worst thing about that is if you activate any of those and you haven't baited out the toad, the toad can then just steal it and then they can go again the next turn. So of all of the ones you want them to steal, you don't mind them stealing the lightning storm or a dark hole because they're probably not going to use it. If they steal a Regeki, that can be annoying as hell. So again, against them, the reason I've gone with Dark Hole or I would prioritize Dark Hole over anything else is, as we've already kind of assessed, Lightning Storm is ideal against Labyrinths, but it's okay against the rest. Dark Hole is, well, apart from getting locked out on Cash or Blooming Branded, Dark Hole is the overall better option Less effective against Trap Tricks, less effective against Sprites if they have Toad, but if you bait that out, you still clear their entire board, uh, unless they've left the carrot on the board. 
Okay, moving on to, again, my personal favorite card for this format. And again, you can consider this card as either Lava Golem, Raw Sphere Mode, or Kaijus, depending on the deck you are playing, because you will then adapt it. And I'm just going to talk about how effective they're going to be against the particular decks, what you will tribute, what you will get rid of, and at what decks you might swap them out for something else. So Lava Golem against Cash Tiras. If I was to play Lava Golem, Raw Sphere Mode, or... Um, Kaiju, which one would I rather have? Well, probably against Cash Tiras, Rasphere Mode is maybe the more be uh, the more prominent option because it will deal with a Rise Heart, it will deal with Shangri-La, and it will deal with Fenrir. So that is the base minimum that I'd expect them to have. So that's a very, very good out. It's still a little bit more difficult to out the Rasphere Mode because you need non-target removal, basically. So of those options, definitely Rasphere Mode. For branded, again with the branded option, it really depends, but it looks like the common boards are ending on anywhere between two to three monsters. They can kind of recover a little bit because they do have branded in red and they do have expulsion. Then they do also lock you out of, I believe it's just summoning in general with the gimmick puppet. So that can be a little bit damaging, but that would pretty much stop Lava Golem, that would stop Rasphere Mode, it would also stop a Kaiju. So there's not really an out and out direction for that one. What you do need to kind of consider is when you're trying to pick a board apart, if your opponent gets a bit lapsical and they don't lock you out and you're able to get to... Like, the, the big difference is Kaijus and Lava Golem are searchable. Rasphere Mode is a little bit more difficult to search. And the reason they're searchable is if you play Small World, you actually have a bridge to get to them. It's one of the ones that decks play on something like Pot of Prosperity, not needed to consume their normal summon in the form of Branded, in the form of Cash Tears. Um, They could actually like play a Pot of Prosperity or a Small World, get to it, and if you don't, like, there's no guarantee you're always going to try and negate that bridge they're going to try and play. And as soon as they get to it, there's nothing you can do. Because the next play, like, you can't negate it. They're just going to go, okay, cool. Like, unless you're going to flip a Master Restrict, definitely not happening. You just go, okay, cool. Lava Golem, done. So, against Branded, at the very least, you would Lava Golem, Mirror Jade, and um, Dragoon. At the maximum, you would probably Mirror Jade, uh, you would Ras Fear Mode, Dragoon, uh, Rinbrum, and Mirror Jade. You could get rid of the Dust Dragon if you want to, if they leave that on the board. But the fact that the Dust Dragon can still trigger in the graveyard pretty means it's a, a wasted tribute. Moving on to Sword Soul. I feel against Sword Soul, the better option would be uh, Lava Golem. They can't always consistently confirm they're going to end on a Monk, a Cheese Out, and a Baron. If they do, then obviously Rasumo can be very, very damaging because straight away it'll turn off their Blackout. Whereas if you Lava Golem them, their Blackout will still be live with Monk. So... Unless they leave Baron on the board, and then you go, you know what, I'm not worried about Baron, and you just Lava Golem, their Chi Zhao, and their Monk, and then straight away their Blackout's gone. So you've got a, kind of, a couple of different options on that one, depending on how you want to hit it. Ras Fear Mode, of course, would be better, but you can't always guarantee on the range of decks that they're always going to end on free monsters on a consistent basis. Like Cash, 9 out of 10, they will end on free monsters, if not more. Uh, when it comes down to it, you, you're probably going to be looking at Rasphere Mode more so for the cash ones because they can play Adventure. They can also play uh, Double Shangri-La, Board Lock, Shenanigans. So you've got a lot to kind of consider with that one. With Branded, they could hold back a little bit or their third, fourth monsters are going to be a little bit less effective. So you don't need to worry about them as much. Sword Soul account can be a little bit tricky, but when you're also, if you're playing Sword Soul as well, that's the difficult part is because you kind of want your normal summon. You don't need it, but you kind of want it. So you're probably going to be looking at more of a Kaijin than anything else. Labyrinths and Track Tricks. Uh, I'm going to talk about both of them kind of simultaneously. So with them, if you are playing them, out of the options, your Ras Fear Mode, your Lava Golem, and your Kaiju, you're probably going to want to play Kaijus in them because you want your normal summon, ideally, massively. Uh, against them, probably a kaiju like they're de like i mean trap is a little bit differently you could lava golem them because they would have a sarah and a reflesia at least on the board uh, i would i don't think rasio modes as effective I, I, they unless they push quite far they're not always going to leave free monsters on the board and even if they did and they were fearful of a Ras Fear mode, the third monster could very well be a Time Thief Redoer, so they can just steal the top card of the deck and then try and run away before that happens, meaning that the Ras Fear mode is dead. Kaiju's okay against them. I would probably go more so for a Lava Golem than anything else. Um, obviously, Labyrinth's Lava Golem, I think. Uh, not Lava Golem, sorry. It's, um, a Kaiju, because I feel that 
the chances are they're going to have one monster on the board. And the thing is, if they activate Big Welcome to try and bounce one of the cards, they can actually bounce the card you back to your hand. Lol. And then use it again. That would be very, very funny. Um, sprites. Lava Golem could be very good. You get rid of Springe. You get rid of um, the Toad. Obviously, I'm, I'm mentioning mainly sprite cards, but you've also got to remember that sprites are with runics, and they're definitely going to be taking a massive bump as well. I believe that Joshua Smith did an updated profile the other day. So, yeah, it's definitely a deck to be reckoned with. They're probably going to be more back row, which is where maybe Lightning Storm becomes a little bit more effective. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel I feel that they're definitely going to put, be putting like at least two monsters on the board, which is why, again, Lava Golem is used as the display pitcher because I feel that it's the most consistent over all of them. Okay, now let's move on to some honourable mentions. So, obviously, honourable mention number one for board breakers is Nibiru. I only didn't put this in the top, like, the four that I was going to talk about because I've already talked about this in the uh, hand trap video. So, if you haven't seen that, go back, watch just the Nibiru section if you want to. But that will kind of, you know, that's already pretty much covered. Karakura. Uh, I wanted to mention Karakura here because it can be pretty good. The issue is if your opponent does not activate a monster effect, it's completely dead. With um, Cash Tears, it's incredibly good because it's rare that they wouldn't activate Shangri-La in the standby phase. And it's also, you know, they can't not activate the effect of Rise Heart to attach because it's mandatory. So Karakura will guarantee to hit two cards in Cash Tears. Against Branded, you have to bait out their Dragoon. You have to bait out their Mirror Jade in order for it to be dropped. Um, in Labyrinths, they can hold their Monster Bat until the end phase. They don't even need to use... Um, Lady Labyrinth until right at the end, which means Karakor is completely dead. Sword Soul, you need to bait the effects out first. Against uh, Sprite, you need to bait the effects out. And Trap Tricks, you need to bait the effects out. So, you know. And then another one, and the reason I didn't put this in the board breaks is it's, again, it's deck specific in regards to, like, can you actually play it or not? And then you still need to get to it. And that is Zeus. So Zeus is obviously one of the best board breaker cards ever. The fact that it's not a once per turn. It's just like a once per chain. The fact that it sends and doesn't destroy. Ugh, it can out pretty much everything. The issue is it can be negated. People can try and stop you getting to it. There's stuff like D barriers. There's being able to return your monsters. Book a moon your monsters. You name it. It is incredibly good against all of the decks mentioned. I feel that being able to wipe your opponent's board is absolutely insane. The issue is get into it and then make sure that your route to it and its actual effect cannot be negated. Now, again, in, in the form of something like um, Trap Tricks, if you summon it and they go, okay, cool, chain Floodgate Trap Hole, you just go, okay, cool, chain Zeus. They're still going to lose their board and your Zeus will just be flipped face down. So they're basically doing a trade. But the part the part of it is, if you're going second, you've like negated their board and then you make Zeus, nine times out of ten, that's all you're putting on the board. You're making Zeus, you're going to clear the board off, and then you're going to build the rest of your board around it. So, very, very good card. Um, definitely good against all of the decks. It's just not something that would be in a side deck, or it, it would be a very specific main deck card. Like, you could, Dark Hole could be put in any deck. A Kaiju, Rasphere Mode, or Lava Golem could be mained in any deck. Book of Eclipse can be mained in any deck, and so can Evenly Match, so can Nibiru. I wouldn't arguably say that Karakora could either. Whereas with Karakora and Zeus, that's why their honorable mentions are not main mentions, is um, they're going to be a side deck card or it's only going to be in your extra deck if you're playing a very specific card or a very specific deck. Anyway, I hope you found this video as informative as the last one. If you did, please smash that like button. Getting the video above 50 likes in the first 24 hours, like I said at the start, will unlock a side deck video exactly like this, where I will take you through the most effective side deck cards against all of these decks as well. So you are well and truly prepared for any OTS championships or even the YCSs coming up at the end of the month. As absolutely always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. And as absolutely always, stay safe and of course, happy dueling.